Hi. I love you. So glad to see you. I'm so grateful to be here with you all. And I just want to say um, that I really, really love your pastors. And I hope you really, really love them too. Um, pastors are like rappers right now. Everybody thinks they can be one. And, and so I'm telling you, it's hard to find good pastors. It's rare to find great ones. And you all are blessed with two of the greatest people that God could ever give you as pastors. Would y'all just give it up for your pastors, Earl and Onika, my dear friends. I love y'all so much. So since you already know they're great, then you should keep that same energy and just be a blessing to them. Pray for them and their family. Uh, and don't mess with them. Because if you do, I'm coming for you. I have been trained with a very special set of skills. I will find you. And I will pray for you. I'll, I'll just pray for you. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go to the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter number 2. There you will find my assignment for today. Um, I, I feel like this message is going to be encouraging for you, um, but it's going to feel like a little bit of heart surgery as well. Don't run away from it. Don't wiggle. Take off your track shoes. Don't be a track star today. I want you to lean into it because I feel like there's something that God wants to do on the inside of you that will mark you forever. So I want to read you this passage, and then uh, after I'll give you the title of the message, then we'll pray. Uh, Gospel according to Mark, chapter number two, starting at the first verse. Here's what it says. When Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room, even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, thought to themselves, thought to themselves, what is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he said to them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or... Stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, we've never seen anything like this before. Ooh, that's good. If you're taking notes, please write this down. Four words from the inside out. That's what I want to talk to you about today, from the inside out. Bow your heads. Let's pray over the word before we get started, shall we? Holy Spirit, touch us from the inside out. Amen. Amen. I pray real quick. I know I've offended some intercessors, uh, but I'm the one you want over for Thanksgiving dinner. You'll eat it while it's hot. Eat it while it's hot. Eat it while it's hot. Uh, Jesus is... Uh, indeed, the most viral person that's ever lived on the face of the planet. Without the assistance of a blue bird, a lowercase f, or a picture of an antediluvian camera, 
Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. When Jesus started his earthly ministry, it was so compelling that by word of mouth, people heard about the things that he was doing and could not wait to be in his presence to see what he would do next. It's one thing to double tap something on your Instagram as you're scrolling and be like, I really like that. It's another thing to go, where are they now? I want to be where they are. I'll get on a plane. I'll jump on a train. I'll get in the car. I'll go very far. I don't know why Dr. Seuss the whole thing just now. <laughs> but I used to be a battle rapper. I can do this all day. Um, they just followed him wherever he went. And for good reason, for those that got a revelation for who he is, they had been waiting on him for 4,000 years. The first messianic prophecy given with promise is in Genesis 3 and 15. The seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent, and he will bruise his heel. This is God speaking through Eve, talking to Mary. Because you do know that when God speaks to you, he can also speak through you. Some of you all are carrying prophetic words that won't be fulfilled into your great, 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 great grandkids. The only thing he needs you to do is be faithful in this season so that when they step into their season, they can literally step into the promises of God because they had faithful people in their family that carried it from one generation to the other. He had this compelling nature about him that no matter where he went, people followed him. And where they followed him, they were blessed by him, either by something that he did or something that he said. In deed and in word, they were changed. Coming back to the other side of Capernaum, Jesus is now in someone's house. We don't even know whose house it is. But he's in someone's house and he's teaching. And all of these people show up because literally... Jesus is in the house. Do you know what happens when Jesus comes in your house? Can you imagine that the second coming of Jesus wasn't in him, wasn't him coming back on a horse, coming back to the same place where he ascended with his disciples, but it was to your house. Not Dodger Stadium. Not Texas Stadium, not the AT&T Stadium, not the American Airlines Center, your regular, regular house. Can you imagine Jesus showing up to your house and everybody knew it? Which means it's not just your family and your friends that's going to be there. People you don't know are going to be in your house. Now, I got to tell you, I'm an introvert. When people come to my house that I know and love, a timer goes off. In my head, from the moment I greet them at the door, hey, tick, 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 I am loving you while you are draining me at the same time. You're over here and I'm getting, I'm getting so much life from you and I'm dying at the same time. I love your whole soul and I'm wondering when will you leave? It's happening at the same time. It's such a dichotomy. I don't like it, but it's the truth because I'm an introvert. It's not you, it's me. I want you to stay for six hours, but my timer says three. And when it hits that third hour, I'm done with you. You don't have to be done with me, fam, but I am done with you. When people come to my house, when that timer goes off, I will literally leave you wherever you are in my house. I won't say goodnight. I will literally get up and fade. I'm committed to my stuff. I had to do the whole thing. I will fade on you. 
and it would be Juliet, who is the extrovert. <laughs> 35 minutes later, when you realize, where, where is Tim? And she'll be like, <laughs> he went to bed. <laughs> if he didn't say goodnight, don't charge it to him. It's three hours and one minute. He's done with you. And that's for people I love. If Jesus comes to my house, there's going to be some complete strangers there that I don't know. And they're not there to see me. They're there to see him. See, I love what Pastor Earl said when he got up here. This is not a house that's built on the Earl show. This is not a house that's built on personality. When we come in here to Shoreline City, we don't care who's here except Jesus. I don't know who's singing today. I don't know who's preaching today. As long as God's presence is there, that's where I want to be. I don't know who's going to teach. I don't know who's going to sing. I don't know who's going to play. But as long as Jesus is there, I want to be in the house. Jesus talking in the house. And the whole house fills up. Just imagine everybody sitting on your couch. People sitting on your fold-out chairs. People at the breakfast nook. People at the dining room table. And there's still people in there. So with no more places to sit, people are just standing in your house. You don't even know them. You looking around, you're like, I don't even know y'all. Why y'all all here? The house packs up. People are still showing up. They can't get in the house. And so they just stand at the door. And the people that are standing at the door, some people line up behind them. They standing next to them. And then some people go, this door is getting jammed. So they go to a window. <laughs> and the people that are at the window are at the back door. Everywhere you turn, somebody is looking in the house because they're trying to hear Jesus. Before you know it, that crowd has formed an outer ring outside the house. And then there's some people behind them and behind them and behind them and behind them and behind them. So now there's so many people surrounding the house that they can't even hear Jesus firsthand. So Perhaps somebody is like echoing what Jesus is trying to say to the people outside because they can't even hear him anymore. Those inside are going, verily, verily. They hear him saying, verily, verily, I say unto you. And they're like, verily, verily, he said unto you. Hey, tell them, verily, verily, he said unto them. Go ahead. <laughs> the kingdom of God is like, the kingdom of God, he's talking about, hey, the kingdom of God is like, uh-huh. You need to die on the cross to your, you need to crucify your flesh. Oh, oh, hey, I don't know what he mean with this crucifixion business, but he just said, you need to crucify your flesh. Hold on, I'll get clarity in a minute. Go ahead. <laughs> exactly what you mean by take up your cross, because that don't sound, I don't even know if I want to be here no more. I didn't know you was, <laughs> seems like your message took a left, sir. I didn't know, that sounds like it's painful. I, I, Maybe I don't want to be your disciple. Maybe I, <laughs> maybe I'm done. <laughs> um, he said, you got to die. Okay, so go ahead. All these people are listening to his message. And four friends who have a friend who is paralyzed on a mat that know Jesus' reputation say to themselves, we are going to get you into Jesus's presence. We've heard this guy can heal people. And I don't mean like with some medicine. I mean, he speaks and things change. I don't mean like in three weeks stuff dries up. I don't mean he hands you a medicated ointment and you apply it. I mean, he speaks and stuff just happens. And it seems to be kind of indiscriminate. He kind of doesn't care who he does it to. 
Like he's not looking for people that have degrees. He's not checking to see what zip code you live in. He doesn't seem to care about what ethnicity you are, even though he's only called to the lost sheep of Israel. The common denominator seems to be faith. And whoever gets in his presence and applies this faith, he starts doing stuff. You've been like that a long time, man. We're about to put you in his presence. And so they pick him up. Everybody grabs a corner of his mat. And they start walking him to the house where Jesus is. Can I just pause and say, I need some friends like that. I need some friends in my life that love me enough to say, I'm going to put you in Jesus' presence whether you like Jesus or not. I'm about to put you in Jesus' presence whether you are atheist or not. I'm about to put you in Jesus' presence whether you are an agnostic or not. I'm going to put you in Jesus' presence whether you got hurt by the church or not. Because even though you got hurt by some people in the church, the God of the church is still the same. He wants to heal. He wants to deliver. He wants to set free. And they walk this man to this house. They don't know who this man is, who owns the house. They just know who's in the house. They, they don't need to know this dude's name. They know Jesus' name. And they start walking with this dude. And I don't know how far that house was from where they started. All I know is when they turn the corner, And saw how many people was up in front of this house. They had a decision to make. They could have turned this corner and been like, oh, my gosh. Oh. What time did the service start? Lord, have mercy. The parking lot is full. Let's go to Cracker Barrel. Let's, let's come back next... Maybe he'll do a revival and he'll be here more than one day. Because, but today, uh, all these people, this is inconvenience. You know what? They did not turn around. I, I, I believe they didn't turn around for a couple of reasons. Number one, their faith is what propelled them to bring him to Jesus in the first place. The second was, I'm just assuming, but I'm on good ground to assume this, he's heavy. <laughs> I can carry you for a little bit. But I can't carry you for a lifetime. I need to get you in the presence of Jesus because he can do more with your burdens than I ever could. I got to get you in the presence of Jesus because I can't carry your burdens like he can. I can't drag you around for the rest of my life. I can help you. I can pray for you. I can assist you a little bit. But you need God to change you for a lifetime. They turned that corner. They were like, mm, mm, mm. A lot of people. What is we going to do? What is we going to do? I don't know who the first person was to make the suggestion. Because I don't know how suggestions like this even come up. <laughs> Maybe they didn't like the echo they were receiving. Maybe they didn't like getting it second and third and fourth hand. Verily, 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 verily. I say unto you, I say unto you, I say unto you. They couldn't press through that crowd with the paralyzed man to get him into Jesus' presence. So I don't know who thought of it first. But one of them dudes was like. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, I got an idea. <laughs> Check this out. Just go with me real quick. Go, hey, don't say nothing. Just go with me real quick. What if, right, stay with me. What if we get him and put him on the roof, right? Stay with me. I know it's crazy. I know it sounds wild. Hold on. Then, right, we can tear through the roof. Stay with me now. Then we just gently, we're not going to drop you, fam. Don't worry about it. We're not going to drop you. Gently, bam. 
We just get them in there. We just get them in there. I know it's property damage, but I'm just saying. We can pay for that later. At least we get them in the house. And these four guys came to this decision and clearly, <laughs> please don't get mad at my observations. Clearly the fifth guy didn't protest, but even if he did, what was he going to do? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm just saying. <laughs> He's like, yo, man, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with this. And it's like, fam, what, what is you going to do? You, you going to run? What, 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 what is you going to do, fam? You leaving? You don't like this idea? You're kind of a captive audience. Let's go. So, I don't know if they tie him down or whatever, but like, two dudes get on the roof. And then, they gotta like, prop him up on his mat and like, lean him against the house. And then they grab the corners and they just drag him on top of the roof. And then, while Jesus is teaching, they are like, <laughs> verily, verily. He, he's right here. I found him. Yeah, he right. He sound like he's muffled a little bit, but it sounds like he right here. And while Jesus is teaching, all of a sudden, everyone that's in the house just hears. Obviously, the houses that were built back in that day are not built like, you know, edifices now. And so uh, 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 th this was like mud and pitch and leaves and, 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 and sticks and, and things that, that held this together. And, and, and they're just ripping through it. Mm. And Jesus. Is completely unbothered. He's not offended by this interruption at all. He is not like, I'm trying to preach here. God. I mean, me. <laughs> Had to do that one. Um, I don't think he's bothered by this situation. Because I think this situation kind of reminds him of his assignment. For in the same way that these four faithful young men have torn through this roof to get into Jesus' presence, Jesus had to tear through eternity into time to get into our presence. He understands what it means to interrupt someone's party. He understands what it means to interrupt someone's situation. I don't know about you, but Jesus interrupted my lifestyle when he stepped into it and said, Hey, I know that you like doing this and doing that, but enough is enough. I am coming into your tabernacle. I am coming into your house. I know you didn't ask for me to come in. I just happened to make my way through the door. And you didn't let me in through the front door I kind of tore through the roof to come in and give you the truth they peek in hey sir sorry Mr. Jesus it's not e we're not even it's not even us uh my friends here hold on hold on hold on and I think at least one had to jump down if not two into the room hey y'all I'm so sorry if you think we cut in line. It's just my friend here. Hold on, come on, come on. Bring him down. Ah. Uh, uh. Oh yeah, he heavy. Yeah, you heavy, you heavy, you heavy. Get him down. Watch his feet. Okay, get on that side. Okay. And do the thing. Come on, Jesus. Do the thing. 
You know you be doing the thing. Do the thing. You be healing people. That's what we heard. Do it, Lord. Now, Lord. Deliver, Lord. Breakthrough, Lord. Do it now. And Jesus looks down at the paralyzed man. Paralyzed man's looking at Jesus. Jesus looks down at the paralyzed man. Paralyzed man's looking up at Jesus. Jesus looking down at the paralyzed man. Paralyzed man looking up at Jesus. Jesus looking down at the paralyzed man. Two of the friends from the roof are looking over Jesus, looking down at the paralyzed man. <laughs> and they both agree that he's paralyzed. But they don't agree where. And we know that they don't agree where he's paralyzed based on Jesus' statement. Jesus looks down at this guy and he says, my child, your sins are forgiven. What? This seems anticlimactic to all the work we did to get here. We brought you here to do the thing. Jesus' response is kind of like, I just did the thing. No, 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 but, 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 but like he was paralyzed and we wanted you to heal him. And Jesus is like, I just did. Mm. Come on, come on. Yes. No, you didn't. He's still paralyzed. Jesus' response, yes, I did. He's not paralyzed. Because when I heal people, I heal people from the inside out. You're waiting for God to, sh- to fix something on the outside, and God's always going to start with the inside. Why would he give you the promotion and leave you bitter? Why would he give you the marriage and you're still, you still have low self-esteem? Why would he give you the house but you're still prideful? So many of us are praying for God to fix a situation externally when he's waiting to heal you internally. This guy's just sitting there. I can't imagine what the paralyzed man is thinking. I'm not sure. This is what I came for. I can't imagine what his four friends are thinking. We done tore a hole in this man's roof. (laughs) To get his sins forgiven? Why would Jesus heal this man externally for him to walk out of his presence never to be seen again? When he could heal him internally and see him again for eternity. God is so interested in your heart that he will leave your external request on red. Until you agree with him that this is what I really needed for my soul to begin with. He makes the statement, and this scene is supposed to be over. Like, that's supposed to be it for the whole rest of the story. Except for these religious people over here. Because when Jesus said, my child, your sins are forgiven, they said, Scripture says, we all read it together, to themselves. Who does this man think he is? No one can forgive sins. Only God can do that. This is blasphemy. They didn't say it out loud, y'all. They said it to themselves. They said it inside to themselves and to the point that they were looking like. You ever seen somebody not say something out loud, but they face they face said it all. Right. Some some people just can't control their body language. But like, how do you feel about it? (laughs) They never said anything out of their mouths. But Jesus. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. They didn't say anything externally. But he heard their hearts internally. And he had just did something in this man's heart internally. And now he moves to the religious people. He says, do you have a problem with what I just said? What do you think is easier for me to do? To say 
your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise, pick up your mat and walk. And I love Jesus because he's so gangster. He doesn't even let them answer. To prove to you that I am the son of God, that I am who I said I am, he turns back to the guy who has no idea what this conversation is about. He's just sitting there like, how, what? My sins. And then he's like, now is he checking? What did they say? I didn't hear. Did y'all hear him say? I don't know. He seemed to be going hard after them. <laughs> then he turns back and says, rise up, pick up your mat, and walk. This is so good. This dude, I don't know how long he had been paralyzed. This dude is sitting there, laying there. And off of one command, he is told to do something that maybe he's never done in his life. And if he did, he hasn't done it in so long, he forgot how. Muscles should be atrophied, should have no strength in his legs based on wherever his paralysis lied. And Jesus said, rise up, pick up your mat and walk. And this dude, off of that word, went. Mm -mm. Ooh, ooh, oh, oh. Rolled up his mat. It's like, thank you, Mr. Jesus. I don't know what y'all doing. Bye. <laughs> Come on, y'all. We can leave now. He walks out. Because he had his true miracle that day. And it wasn't the healing of his paralysis. It was the healing of his heart. The forgiveness of his sins. The Holy Spirit reminded me that on the day that Jesus was crucified, in between two thieves, that one of the thieves said, if you really are the son of God, if you are the Messiah, get down and take us with you. The other guy pinned to a cross on the opposite side of Jesus said, don't you have any respect even while you're dying? This man did nothing wrong. And he's paying the same price we did, and we know we're guilty. And he turns to Jesus and says, hey, will you just remember me when you get into your kingdom? One of the thieves wanted something done externally. The other thief knew he needed something internally. You know what a gracious God who was bleeding out for the sins of the entire world says in this moment? Today, you will be with me in paradise. He never gets him off of the cross. But he got him out of an eternity separated from God. I don't know who this message is for, but God's not about to check your to-do list externally until you let him check his to-do list in your heart internally. There's some things that he wants to address that no one else can see. You got a bucket list? He does too. Let him check his first. And then he will give you the desires of your heart. Let him heal you from the inside out. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? What is the Holy Spirit saying to you through this message? There may be someone in this room and, and, and you feel, you know, God, you're speaking to me. I didn't even want to hear this today. 
you love me enough to tell me what you desire from me. If Jesus was to say, point to where it hurts, would y'all point to the same place? He wants to heal you from the inside out. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, whether you're watching or whether you're in this room, would you let him in your heart right now? All of us were born in sin, shaping in iniquity, and therefore we have a paralysis in our soul that we cannot heal ourselves. No one can carry us around in our sinful state, but there is one who was pinned up for that sinful state, and he would love to have a relationship with each one of us. So if that's you and you're in this room right now and you don't know Jesus is Lord and and you say, I, 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 I'm identifying my paralysis. I, I know that I need you to touch my heart. I just want you to lift your hand right where you are. I want to give my life to Jesus right now. If that's you, just raise your hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. Yay. Oh, my goodness. You should be proud to lift it up, especially if you have on good deodorant. Thank you so much for lifting your hand. Thank you. Thank you. I want a relationship with Jesus. I want the paralysis gone. Touch my heart. Father God, I thank you for every hand that is raised. I thank you for the commitment that they are making right now. God, I thank you for their confession, their yes to you. God, thank you for healing us all from the inside out. God, do something for us that we cannot do for ourselves, not for our credit, but all for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.